the most potent argument is the simplest argument. We did not have to break down 5,000 years of brutal, violent, dynastic history. There's a much simpler argument to put it like this, okay? It's a lot more simple and straightforward. This is, this is the truth. The nations are not united. There is no United Nations. We're not talking about the organization. There is no United Nations. There are the eternal nations. There is no such thing as pre-communist Russia, communist Russia, and post-communist Russia. Russia is an eternal nation. As the Russian Empire, she has eternal interest. As the Soviet Empire, she has eternal interest. After jettisoning communism, she has eternal interest. Likewise, the complete thing about China, there is, there is, in terms of the actual reality, there is no China before communism. There is no real communist China. There is no real post-communist China. So Russia is actually the best, basically, statement on what you should expect. There is this idea of China before communism, which we have, we believe we have thoroughly refuted based on the actual dynast dynastic his history, which is as violent or perhaps even more violent than the Romans and the Spartans. Okay. There is this idea of basically, oh, what, what happens to the likes of China after communism? It's more going to be along the lines of Russia. We talked about how empires are brutal, they're violent, and let me give an example. Even the United States is arguably an empire, okay? So if people have this idea, let, let me, let, so all empires reach a certain size. And in my perspective, as countries reach a certain size, they eventually become basically uh, more like national security states, or even a police state, or an empire, okay? There is this idea that of basically, in, in our opinion, because a country like the United States has reached su such an imperial boundary, now, no one is going to get their old West freedoms back, unless they shrink to two-thirds of size, and you have a society of farmers that are roughly equal, like some Athenian Greek city-state. All countries get to a certain size, and all empires have a violent history. So, for example, the Native Americans, Native nations, if you think that from sea to shining sea, this all became the United States because the people who were already there, they were convinced by the eloquent words of Thomas Jefferson and the eloquence of the Declaration of Independence and the, and the wording of the Constitution, they're out of their mind. Okay, so basically, the, the construction of the United States, it also has a recent imperial history. But this is not some liberal argument. So basically, if, if this argument gets the sympathies of the left, oh, the United States is an evil empire, we, we are not siding with the left. Okay, one thing we believe in is winning an argument with honor. So we talked about how we have no morals, but we do believe in honor in in battle. We So we, we do not believe in propaganda. We do not believe in hypocrisy. So if one, if one side is an empire, the other side is also an empire. So there is no such thing as the evil American empire when your own history is just as or even more bloody and violent. From, from the past to the recent times. But the main point of argumentation that we want to make is that this idea is completely rhetorical. Russia and China and India and others are eternal nations. Nations have eternal interest. Friends and enemies are temporary. This idea of, of basically this imperial Russia, communist Russia, and post-communist Russia. This is complete wordplay. Communist Russia, Christian Russia. Communist China, post-communist China. This is all complete nonsense. The only thing that is the constant is the eternal struggle 
of nations.